his horse. <laughs> Will you tell father? Gentlemen, the day I will be delivered to the Archduke Ferdinand at the gala. I expect you to behave with distinction on this hunt. Good luck. And Godspeed. Could they not fit you a rocking chair on that horse, Grandad? Law be my gun bearers by evening. I've no doubt of that. Ha! Horsemanship, Major. Excellent shot, sir. Ah. Well, these woods have been deadly to horses. To death. The best source to life. You'll be the toast of the gala. Here they come. Oh, he's triumphant. Daddy did it. Come here, you. Oh. <laughs> Someday, you and I will go hunting together. must be so pleased with yourselves, you men. Making us wear these awful things. <laughs> At least you're not wearing trousers. Oh, I would if I could. I know. Well? Rather lovely. Rather lovely. What is it? What's amiss? You've got the dear. All eyes will be on you this evening. Well, my darling, I will be the only man there tonight of my rank whose uniform is unadorned. Oh, how can that matter now? The great Secretary Price will be at the gala. Oh, Major Fawcett. <laughs> You've no medals. Oh, no, Mr. Bryce. You see, I've been terribly busy teaching ancient militiamen to point their rifles at tree stumps, so... No, no. 
No medals for me, sir. Tell me. Who is this Secretary Grace when he's at home? The last man here upon whom we might possibly rely for advancement. I see. I'm getting older, Cheeky. And very impatient of lost years. And now the medals are ridiculous, I do. But this may be our final chance. Is in an Bryce, Bryce, this is Major Fawcett. Major. It's not a sir. This Honest is Bellamy. Major. 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 Bryce, Bryce, Mrs. Bellamy. Major and Mrs. Percy Fawcett. Toasting the kill without you. Well, I'm dancing with you, so I've got the better of the bargain. May I, Major? Spoken too soon. Colonel. By the way, who got the kill? Oh, that would be Major Force, uh, Mr. Secretary. Oh, well, we should invite him to supper. Oh. Well, may I say, he's been rather unfortunate in his choice of ancestors. I see. Oh, well, then. Tell me, how is Lady Vernon? More than 20 cases, Clive. Hurry along, men. Come on. Come on, put your backs into it. Oh, sir. Put your backs into it. Hurry, right, it's so along. Come on, men. Sir? So, you're off to London tomorrow, to the Royal Geographical Society. The Royal Geographical Society? There's a major exploration afoot. Sounds like a grand adventure. Thank you, sir. Major Fawcett, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Come in. I'm Sir George Goldie, president of the RGS. 
This is Mr. John Scott Kelty, our secretary. How do you do, Major? How do you do, sir? Our paths did not cross during your work here several years back, did they? They did not, sir. I was likely consumed with my studies at the time. Of course. Uh, please, sit down. Thank you. Ah, the army seems to have posted you in many places in the past. Yes, I've served in Ceylon and in Hong Kong before that. Most recently in Ireland. As you can see, I've been transferred a fair bit around the Empire. Major, what do you know about Bolivia? In South America, sir. That's right. Only what I've read. Then you can't know very much. This is as good a map of Bolivia as we have. Most of it's blank, as you can see. Nothing's really known about it at all. A land of primitives. But there are rubber plantations all over Amazonia. Very profitable. There is now considerable argument between Bolivia and Brazil as to what constitutes their border. So fantastically high is the price of rubber that war could arise. Do you follow? I do, sir. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not sure what this has to do with me. I'm getting the word. Neither country will accept mapping done by the other, so they've requested us to act as a referee. Mm. As you completed your mapping here with distinction, you came under our consideration. I see. Sirs, may I speak candidly? Please. My survey work was long ago. To be quite honest, I was rather hoping for a position where I might see a fair bit of action. Major, this is far more than just survey work. This is exploration in the jungle. The environment's brutally difficult. Terrible disease, murderous savages. The journey may well mean your life. At the very least, you will be gone for several years. But were you to succeed, such an undertaking could earn you soldierly decoration and even reclaim your family name. You know we knew your father. Did you? Yes. I did not. A terrible thing. Man's love of drink and gaming. But as I say, success in this venture could change your lot. Considerably. Play. I want to talk to your father for a minute. Do you want to pick me a flower? Uh. Mm. Shall I throw the ball for her? Yes. Yeah. Ready? Steady? I'll not know you when you return. 
But you must go, I know that. Indeed. I have something to tell you. I know I'm having another child. Don't be sad. I'm an independent woman. I had noticed. <laughs> Cheeky. No doubt. a week. Why are you just presenting yourself now? I wanted to make sure you're up to the task, sir. Are you drunk, Mr. Coston? No. You could have fooled me. Well, well, I might have had a little. I've got a little condition. See, I'm better skilled at rifle and pistols. Medal for bravery. It's very impressive. You have a family? 
No, no, no. So. I see. So nothing to shed. I take it you do then. Mr. Coston, I would like to be clear. My reputation as a man rests entirely on our success. I think you shall find me capable of every sacrifice. Therefore, I must insist. Oh, I do ask that. You'll need all the fortitude you've got. Understood. We are explorers now. Verde River. Find its source. It forms a critical part of the border between Bolivia and Brazil. Our survey route is to begin at a place called Fazienda Jacobina, which does not appear to be on this map. I know Fazienda Jacobina. It's an old rubber town. It's meant to be quite enchanting. Really? It may not be completely useless after all. Of the essence now. War is at stake. So you and I and a couple of mules, and we'll stop a war. And you and I are going to have to depend on each other. Neither of us will survive this alone. That's your. What's that you're reading? Home. Oh. From my wife by Kipling. It's called The Explorer. Abbott. Would you like to hear it? It'll be a long way until we reach Amazonia. Be my guest. There's no sense in going farther. It's the edge of cultivation. So they said, and I believed it broke my land and sowed my crop, built my barns and strung my fences in a little border station, tucked away below the foothills where the trails run out and stop, till a voice as bad as conscience rang interminable changes on one everlasting whisper day and night repeated so something hidden go and find it go and look behind the ranges something lost behind the ranges lost and waiting for you go Twenty-nine degrees. Sixteen minutes south of the equator. Twenty-nine. Sixteen. 
There's a deadly looking snake here. <laughs> We might be a little bit too English for this jungle. Strange is in a strange land. a grande casa de ópera e a linda fazenda jacobina agradecimentos ao barão de gondolis e à companhia de mineração inca por favor tenham em mãos os seus ingressos obrigado à vontade Major Fawcett, is that you? Yes. Welcome to Fazenda Jacobina. Lance Corporal Manley, sir, the agent of the Governor General. We disturb on ceremony. Simple handshake will suffice. This is Mr. Coston. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I have received a telegram from the Border Commission. Go on. I strongly advise you to abort the mission. It's become far too dangerous, sir. They've already fired One of the government officers. Sir. Government, sir. I'm afraid you've left government behind a long time ago. In that case, you'd better send them a telegram. Informing them that we will not stand down and we shall proceed as planned. How quickly can you find us an Indian guide? Well, I... I had an Indian guide, sir, but... Well, what happened to him? What? Was he afraid of a little hard work? Not quite, sir. It's out of my hands now. I need to speak to Baron de Gondores. He runs the rubber company here. Good evening, Baron. Thank you for seeing us. We are from the British Army. We are to be venturing up the Rio Verde and find ourselves in need of some of your men. In exchange, I promise very favorable treatment from my country. Nobody comes back from up there. 
ever. Is a slave good enough for you? Yes. Do you speak English? He understands. We taught him. What will he take for him? And any four men of his choosing. It offends you to negotiate with me. No, not at all. Please, do not embarrass yourself. You come here to make maps. Why is that? So that there may be peace. What is peace? Peace means my business will flourish. I will flourish. Peace means only that nothing will change. I will help you because you will make sure that nothing will change. I forgot to give you this, Major. Came directly here while you were surveying. Show me how far the river goes. Mucho tiempo sobre el río. Yo conozco todo el río. Muy bien. Three full rafts. Four horses. Just that party. Bloody desperate lot you've got us. They're as dependable as any can be found here, Mr. Costa. We're the only ones who'll pay them. Do 12 hours a day. No less. The river will be our home for the next two years. We shall not fail. Mankind awaits our discovery. I can see the fish, but, but I can't catch them. Nothing again. 
I don't understand. The river is deep here. There is plenty of fish. It's a desert. A green desert. All right, pull it in. Try again further up. Did you force it? What on earth is she doing all the way out here? She'll come to load rubber, no doubt. Or maybe she's looking for the gold of El Dorado. German. Truck says Hamburg. Someone aboard. Hey! Are you German? Bist du Deutsch? Kommst du aus?
Both. Faltan muchas semanas. El río siempre es peligroso. Pero tú verás mucha gente que vive en la selva. Ciudades bonitas con oro y maíz, más antiguos que los ingleses. Dentro de la selva, todo está hecho de oro, brilla todo como el oro. Lo siento, inglés, o seré libre, pero tú nunca tendrás escape. Your wife has moved the family to Devon. She's given birth to a boy named Brian. The oldest boy, Jack, is excelling in all ways, she says. Mr. 
Costa. Manager. Oh, God. Jesus Christ, we are got dead from hungry. One piece. Jesus Christ, you're good at it. Give me that. Control yourselves. We are not savages. We're leaving our binds here, Major. And for what? back without any food. Have you ever thought about that? Oh, we're here, starving to death. We're not even looking for gold. Let's have it. Major. Major, we lost the Indian. He's run off. He got us here. reading. I see it too. Please. It's a really chance. Oh, stop.
What is it, chick? It's pottery. On the ground. Look, it's all over. Look at this. They're ancient. Christ, he was right. The Indian was right. You said no one had been here before. I think you meant no white man, Mr. Coston. I think you meant no white man. Mad. There must have been dwellings here. Thank God that boar has more meat in it than we do. The exit from hell is always difficult, Mr. Costin. We will get back. The world will know what we have found here. Keep going. Come on. Come on, let's drop it. I'll everything you need. Brian. And here's Jack. Are you my father? I am indeed, son. Come, give me a hug. Go home. Thank you all. Percy, come meet our host, Mr. James Murray. He's very anxious to meet you. 
person with considerable resources. He certainly has a beautiful home, and of course a reputation to match. Ah, Mr. Murray. Major Fawcett, I see you down there. Welcome to the inner circle. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Mrs. Fawcett? Beep. I will get it early. Percy, they're all so excited to hear your speech to the RGS. Listen to them, will you? They're all talking about your mission. Extraordinary. I'm just honored to be here, sir. I read your article in the Times this morning about the slave trade in the Americas, sir. You're an enlightened man. Poor savages. The native does deserve our sympathy. Yes. I think we have only just scratched the surface of Amazonia. Most certainly. I was, um, I'm a biologist, but I'm also somewhat of an explorer. I was second in command under Shackleton in the Antarctica. Did you know that? I don't think there's anyone here who's not well aware of your accomplishments, mm. Mr. Murray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have distinguished yourself with great bravery. I know what these expeditions require. Well, it's been my lifelong ambition to Go to the Amazon, you know. I must say, I, I hope that the RGS continues its pursuits, but I, I have come to believe that map making should be a secondary interest. Really? I witnessed several archaeological discoveries that I believe may have enormous significance such as pottery in the jungle where no white man has ever been before my friend a word in your ear please um, your your exploits have opened every door for you but yes, i would sir. suggest keeping such findings to yourself mm -hmm. it is one thing to defend the primitive jungle men it is quite another to elevate their capacity beyond reason I mean, no one here would dispute that you believed what you saw, but uh, uh, such a trip is very hard on the mind. Very hard indeed. Hmm. Mr. Kelty, I think you should find my mind perfectly fit. And still open, thank heavens. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I would like to introduce one of our brothers whose achievements are now known to you and not inconsiderable. Major Percy Fawcett. Thank you, sir. You have five rights I should be with my husband. It's men only, I'm afraid, madam. My esteemed colleagues, it is now my firm belief that Amazonia is far more than the green desert which many of us had supposed. I am proposing that Amazonia contain a hidden civilization. 
One that may well predate our own. Major Fawcett, I am Mr. William Barclay of Bedford, and I have been to South America. Yeah. Please, Mr. Barclay, I'm sure we'd all be thrilled to hear about your holiday. <laughs> but we are currently discussing exploration. Now, to be clear, are you insisting on mythical kingdoms of gold? Now, now those fantasies lured the conquistadors to their destruction. Sir, it was the conquistadors and we who have been destroying Amazonia. I have seen with my own eyes evidence of their civilization, and I assure you, sir, it is real. Perhaps it is too difficult for some of you to admit. We, who have been steeped in the bigotry of the church for so long, cannot give much credence to an older civilization, particularly one created by a race the white man has so brutally condemned to slavery and death. Are, are you insisting that these savages, they are equals? I do not know, Mr. Barclay, but I intend to find out. What, savages in Westminster Abbey? <laughs> Hence your disrespect, sir. But what is at stake? If we may find a city where one was considered impossible to exist, it may well write a whole new chapter in human history. Yes. yes. Consider my evidence. I have archaeological finds antiquities as sophisticated as any in Asia or Europe. In the middle of the jungle. Pots and pans! Pots and pans! After my return from the jungle, I have examined a signal document dating from the conquistadors, Mr. Barclay. It states explicitly the discovery of a lost city. Uncovered in Trinity College, Dublin, this week by my lovely wife, written by a Portuguese soldier in 1753, and I quote, We came upon the ruins of an ancient city, bedecked with gold, roads, temples, ancient symbols. What, El Dorado? <laughs> no, gentlemen, no, I call it Zed. The ultimate piece of the human puzzle. It is there, and we must find it. Mr. Fawcett. Mr. Fawcett, I say we return. I say we go and find the glory. What say you? What I say, Mr. Murray, is I accept that challenge! <laughs> Mr. Costin, I see you seated there. Will you return with us? 
Mr. Fawcett, the jungle is hell, but one kind of likes it. We shall return! And we shall find the glory! I do believe I am quite ready to accompany you on your next journey. What do you mean? The children will be back in school by then. And I have learned to read the stars and navigate, become very well versed in the history of the region. After all, it is I who found the document. I know, darling. But that would be impossible. It's not a place at all for a woman. Not a place for a woman. Yes. We believe firmly in the equality between us. In equality, yes, but in mind, not in body. The rigors of such a trip would be beyond your imagination. I believe it is generally acknowledged that the pain a woman experiences during childbirth far exceeds anything a man must endure. This is not about child. Do you know, child? <laughs> Have you witnessed two minutes of it, let alone endured it? The jungle is about years of practice, training, the art of soldiering. I have that. It is about maggots in your skin. It is about deadly snakes and disease that make you vomit blood. You could not bear it. And I could not bear that either. Somehow I managed to bear the dangers you faced, the years you were gone. This way, at least we might be able to be together for some of our lives. You are my wife. I need you here. Okay. Not as a tent mate in need of constant care. And in this fantasy of yours, what happens to the children? Shh. Please, try to be reasonable. You will throw reasonable in my face. Was it reasonable to stay here and struggle to provide for the children while you wandered the jungle? Now you have given no thought, not one thought, to my aspirations as a woman. Have you thought about that? Men and women have performed their roles since the beginning of time. It is the cornerstone of our civilization. I must say, I did expect more understanding from you, and I am disgraced by your ignorant posture. It's all right, darling. I'm sorry we were shouting. Run along, I'll come in and Mother, moment. please don't oh, fight. It's all right, Jack. Go.
121 miles to Oviedo's last marking. Should put some grease on that. Where are they? That's Mr. Murray. He's bringing up the rear, Chief. Mr. Murray! <clears throat> yes? How are you managing? I am managing well, thank you. My pack is just a little heavy, it seems. Perhaps I shall rid myself of the unnecessary accoutrement. Yes? I wouldn't do that if I were you. You don't want to be ill-equipped for the journey ahead. Well, yes. However, an awful lot of this scientific equipment seems to be slowing us down. When we reach the river, then, you must keep one spare set of clothing. And, of course, your mattress. I believe I shall go naked as Adam in this infernal heat. <laughs> What a sight that would be. Let's keep going. That burger wish he was back on the South Pole. He'll pull his weight soon enough. Don't worry. Shall we treat ourselves to the mail, gentlemen? We've still got the sack from San Carlos. You've got two from your wife and son, Major. There's been a major discovery in Peru. Go on, then. An American, Harren Bingham. He's found a lost city in the Andes, Machu Picchu. It says that Dr. Hamilton Rice is Hot on his trail. Seems we're in a race with the Americans now. We're after a bit of our prestige. It's too far north. Mm. Still, proves there's much to be found. We've lost the other boat. Savages, have yourselves. No, hold your fire. Everyone out of the boat. Take cover. Concentina, sir. Yes, do it now. Play soldiers of the Queen. Come on. Mr. Coffin, come and sing with me. Come. Are you ready? And we're In the fight for England's glory, lads, the England soldiers of the Queen. Amigos. Amigos. Amigo! Amigo! Amigo!
That leads me at all costs. That leads me at all costs. We are safe. The chief has invited us to be his guest. I refuse this madness. I refuse it. Man, come with me. Come. Boys, we have to get back to that boat. Costin. Gallo. Para ti. Y para tu. Tu hijo? Agua. Agua. Maravilloso. Daddy. Sí. Gracias. Estamos buscando casas antiguas, muchas casas, mucha, mucha gente en la cofunde del bosque, sabo, sabi salgo de esto, 
Hitka with Kobun Hichabu. He's heard rumors of a city, but he's not sure. He said further up the river, he thinks there will be people who can help us. Comida? Food? Comida? Comida, si, sí, gracias. substance only stuns the fish. They don't kill more than what they have to. It's all laid out. It's mathematical and it's precision. Well, that's what you've been saying. useless now. I'll have to use the raft. We leave at sunrise. Hello, old sport. I appear to have gotten myself lost. Thank God you're all alive. I had assumed that you'd been cannibalized by those savages. My leg. I have a nasty wound. We looked after. Come. Oh, 
must keep moving. I think I have a bit of a fever coming on. Mr. Manley, help me clean all of this up. when we get to the raft. Mr. Manley, help me get him on his feet. Stay where you are, Mr. Murray. It's essential we keep the balance. <laughs> Murray! Stay <laughs> down! Stay down, God damn you! Stay on the ground! Swim to shore! We're going further down! Swim to shore! Let go! Swim to shore! Let go! You're tipping the raft! You're losing supplies! God damn you! I said let go, you pink and weakling! Let go! Mr. Manley, help me! Help me get to shore! Help me! Russian. I was drowning. There was no chance of that. In this, after you stole our food, I suppose I should have starved myself. That would have been the honourable course of action, wouldn't it? Is that what you want? You want me to die? Oh, please slow down. I'm dying, man. A chance. I just want to be dead. Oh, oh. The infantry of that young upstart and his vulgar quest for glory. Like a Judas, he has delivered me into this jungle. Oh, we're two weeks behind, according to the sexton the charts. Chief. This leg wound of his is becoming more infected. Mr. Murray's got blood poisoning now. For many years. I noticed. A fierce cold in Antarctica. You think I'll make it? Slim chance. He 
is not worth kissing the hem of your garment, as I am not worthy of yours. Give me strength to survive. He is not worthy. Yes, what is it? There are mining encampments south of us on the river. In the morning, you'll be on your way to them. I'm going to give you our last horse with what supplies I can spare and an Indian to guide you. I have a family at home. I cannot allow you to jeopardize the welfare of the entire crew. You don't give a whit about me. Or about any of the party. You don't even care about going home. your lost city. There's a bloody bastard on our last horse. But this is how he repays us. Rations, ruin, murders, cover them in oil. Look at it. We must turn back. There is no turning back! We are right here! We've nothing to show for our efforts! No evidence! What do we go on with? With what we have on our backs will last a week! At most! It's over, Percy!
be sent to the RGS. Mr. James Murray was forced to separate from our expedition to seek medical attention. His location is currently unknown and he has most likely perished. The rest of the group shall arrive back in England as soon as is possible. Looks like a war with threats. Better all get home or we'll miss our chance to fight. Please send that immediately. Yes, sir. That is Joan, as you might have guessed. Your daughter. Beautiful child. Hello, Joan. the boys. No. Let them finish. When they're done, send them in. It should be I who tells them what has happened. Gentlemen, welcome to our new home. Thank you for coming at such short notice. Mr. John. Please, will you step this way? Congratulations on your knighthood. Ah, oh, thank you. I think that you know everybody here. Mr. James Murray arrived in London just this morning. We felt it critical to assemble as soon as possible. Congratulations on your safe return. It's a remarkable effort. Mr. Murray contends that you abandoned him. Is this correct? No, it is not. He was given money and food. It was an unfortunate but necessary maneuver in order to save lives. Sir George, we spent all our time playing around in the mud with the savages. And I never saw any evidence of a lost city. You were the reason we did not reach our destination, Mr. Murray. You poured paraffin on our last supplies. I reject that accusation, Sir John. I cannot tolerate any further insults from this young man. I 
have retained counsel and I will proceed accordingly. And as for his lackeys, they are swine and not to be trusted. You should have been beaten in the jungle like the dog that you are. Please, gentlemen, our nation is now at war. It ill becomes us to indulge personal conflicts. I earnestly beseech you to come to an understanding. Very well. I most generously offer that if you are willing to apologize to me here in front of this entire society, I will consider withdrawing my claims against the RGS and yourself, with certain conditions, of course. Well, Major, will you apologize? For the general good, I am prepared to reconcile. Thank you. I will, of course, need to hear Mr. Murray's conditions. On the day that I agreed to join you on your mission and allowed your star to enter my sphere, your wife was present to witness your descent. My only condition is that she again be present to witness your acknowledgement of the wrongs that you have done to me, sir. Mr. Murray, the last time I saw you, I was putting you on the only remaining horse, giving you far more than your share of our food. The men begged me to leave you where you lay. But I could not do that. And as a consequence, I saved your life. You saved my life? You saved my... I demand an apology right now. You will apologize to me. I will apologize. Thank you. To my men. I'm sorry I ever considered Mr. Murray worthy of your company. And as I ever mistook a man's rank for his metal. But I shall not make that mistake again. What your purpose is in this ambush, I cannot say. But you need fear no more embarrassment from me. I hereby resign from this institution, and I shall proceed on my own. No, but please, Major, please. This is outrageous. Please, you must reconsider. Madness! I shall teach him. We've received a letter. All former officers not currently posted must send their names to the war office. Let us hope it is a brief conflict. Talk to the boys. I'm 
since thou art my love. I've spent a whole life training for this. Father, Jack, Ryan, has Harvey been walked? Um, no, not yet. Right. I'll do it. Father, you will not have to leave again, will you? To fight. If the reports are true. I'm afraid I must. Father, you've only just returned. It's, it's hardly fair. I'm obligated to serve. Obligated? What of your obligation to mother? And to us? Your family? The family that you've chosen to abandon for so many years. Jack. How dare you talk to me like that? How dare, how dare you, Father? You do not think of us. You think of Indians or Germans or any other path to glory that you can find. Jack, stop it, that's enough. Mother, I will not stop. You have returned a failure. The papers are full of it. And you want to abandon us again? It's contempt! Let's see. Let's see. And I hate them. Oh, Jack. Everything. Your father has done since the day you came into this world has been to better your life. And for your own sake, I hope one day you will come to regret the things you just said to him. Please just go. Well, what do you know, Chief? It appears our old friend, Mr. James Murray, is not so powerful after all. Why do you say that? The bastard's gone off on an Arctic expedition with Canadians and mutinied. He's not been heard from since. Take a look. Sure, his magnificent skills will bring him back safely. <laughs> Someone should warn the Eskimos that Mr. Murray is on the prowl. Major. Mr. Costin! We swipe the medium of fine spiritualistic skills of the Russians. Come. To read your fortune. You can't believe you smuggled her in here. <laughs> Welcome to the world beyond. Come on, Chuck. Come on, Chuck. Come on, let the Major read. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
She will be in battle soon, madam. Any spiritual aid would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. You are the explorer? I was. As were these fine men. <laughs> We've transferred here so we could all be together. <laughs> Give me a hand. Feel my hand. Listen to my voice. Is it a forest? You dream to be in a forest. I wish to find a lost city. Can you see yourself there now? Try to picture it in your mind. You cannot blind yourself to this vision. What you seek is far greater than you ever imagined. A vast land bejeweled with peoples. Your soul will never be quiet until you find this new place. It is your destiny. With it, you will illuminate the world. The world has set itself on fire. We must look elsewhere to quench the blaze. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, sir. When I was younger, I ventured all for king and country, for place and rank. <coughs> I believed that to be the makings of a man. my travels have taught me such ambitions are mere phantoms I know in our hearts we fight for our loved ones as we should but they are not here so instead, let us fight for each other. Good luck. And may God be with all of you. I 
fuck the bloody bush. Well said, Mr. Costa. Into positions. Children are
whether I'm here. Colonel, after all that he has done. Jack. I think I was dreaming about Amazonia. I, I'm afraid you may never be able to return to your jungle. I'm sorry. America has quite a fascination with you. Our readers have been asking where you've been since the war. I'm grateful for that interest. You may tell your readers I've recovered from my wounds and have been adapting to home life. Uh, your pursuits in South America have led to a tremendous interest in exploration in the United States. There have been many new voyages planned. Have there? Yes. Dr. Hamilton Rice leaves for Brazil soon with radio and airplanes. He's taking a large and very well-armed party. Let us hope that Dr. Rice, with all his arms, does not destroy what he wishes to discover. Allow me to ask you a question. Yes, sir. How did you find us here? Well, your son, Colonel. He wrote us a letter. Didn't he tell you? Shots, Jack. Thank you, Father. 
Getting quite expert with that rifle. Practice space perfect, you know? I have something for you. This was given to me by a Guarani Indian chief. Great man. It's yours now. Thank you. Must have been a glorious day. You still believe in Zed, do you not? That we underestimated the Indian. That is why we should go back. You and I, together, we could find the city once and for all. <sighs> Jack. I'm an old bastard now. Father, you and I, we both know it. You easily outmatch my strengths. And now you can see as clear as day again. There is nothing stopping us. Father. The Americans will venture there with their guns. And then we must pray that they do not destroy the Indians. We must find it before they do. I want nothing more than to go with you, Father. It's everything you've always wanted. to consult a higher authority. I understand that it's dangerous, but you've said so yourself. With everything that's happened in Europe, it's not possible to choose a safe passage through life. So many men near my own age did not return from the war. And, and who is to say it will not happen again? It could, Mother. It could happen again. By all accounts, I should be furious because you've just... You've just used my very own words against me. And how can I refute them? They are my own. Joan's been so annoying. Bloody slap me! All right, Joan, don't slap him. Thank you. Uh, off. Go on. She's giving you on the face. Brian, I'm in the middle of a conversation. Go and help your sister. Get some wood, please, from the log pile now. Now! Fight your own battles. Oh, please. There is little doubt that I would worry night and day. 
about my boys in the jungle. But we have never let fear determine our future. That's all. Training, well, of course, I shall begin right away. You and I, and Mr. Coston, I'm sure he'd love to join us. Thank you, Mother, thank you. What? You just surprised you greet so quickly. What choice did I have? It's his essential nature. Would be wrong to betray that. Besides, you will be there to guide him. Here they are, too. Here's the last of my notebooks. That would be helpful. I truly not persuade you to come. We came so close, Henry. Think of what it would mean to finally find it together. Chief, I have a wife and child now. children were younger than yours is now when we went on our first trip. Can't say it was not a sacrifice. But if you could see my boy now, his vim and vigor, I guarantee it would tear down your resistance in an instant. Would you like some more brandy, sir? No, thank you, Nigel. For yourself, sir. Yeah, thank you. Chief, please don't misunderstand me. I'm a bit sympathetic. This search for Zed, I can no longer bear the cost. its existence. No. I only doubt that Zed could provide all the answers you seek from him. I wish you success, my dear friend. This will be no pampered expedition. Top-heavy missions get nowhere. They linger on the fringe of civilization and bask in publicity. We will not. We will be in the field for three years, standing on our own two feet, surviving by our wits. Tribesmen shall take our dispatches to be delivered for publication as often as possible. But who's going to finance this latest journey of yours? The money is generously being supplied by a consortium of American newspapers and Mr. John D. Rockefeller, Jr. Are you aware the Royal Geographical Society has just offered to help with the financing? I'm glad to see our nation is not to be left behind. 
I would like now to introduce my companion for this historic expedition, my own son, Mr. Jack Fawcett. He is a man of great discipline and keen as mustard. Well, you couldn't very well be shamed by the Americans now, could we? <laughs> no, but I am proud to say that we did finally manage to meet them halfway. Sir George, God rest his soul, always bore you great affection. But I admit my error in not accepting your beliefs long ago. All that matters now is the future. Yes. I have carried this for the last 20 years. When we reach Zed, I shall send it to you as a sign. Just in case I decide not to come back. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> Oh, um, now, we, we, we have something mm -hmm. for you. Mr. Barclay, please. <laughs> the Society's highest honor, the Founder's Gold Medal. You are truly deserving, Colonel. Truly. Indeed. arrangements made we leave for Portugal on the 7th <coughs> and then we meet again in Brazil no one can best us now remember the code with the coordinates is in my desk and Mr. Coston has a copy in yes, safekeeping you've told me a thousand times now run along or you'll miss your boat <laughs> You're a man now, responsible for your mother and sister's care. It's a fine calling. No less, perhaps even more virtuous than ours. All right? Goodbye, Father. I should indeed miss you. As I always have. Look after your father for me. Fun. Yes. And be bold. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Father. I love you. On to Zed, then. And a new history. People are following our journey. It's incredible. It's wonderful. <laughs>
pretty fairy. Never felt better. Neither have I. We'll be on the river soon. And if we're lucky to see an opera. This is where they sang. It's astonishing. It's just a pity you couldn't see it intact. Yes. The jungle is restoring the balance. Dearest Cheeky, this is the last letter you shall receive until we reach Z. The rest of our party is returning home. Jack is acquitting himself marvelously. Today we reached a tribe of Indians who told us of a cave entirely unknown to anyone outside of their clan. Boom. Kazenchi. They tell of an enormous rock there, covered with painted pictures of men and horses. Its location is perhaps the gateway to Zed. Saraka! The chief has been very generous to us here, and he reminds me yet again that we are all made of the same clay. with the old civilization within a month. Thereafter, our fate is in the lap of the gods. You need have no fear of any failure. Amigos! 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 Oh, 
so little of this world. But you and I have made a journey that other men cannot even imagine. And this has given understanding to our hearts.
I love you, father. I love you, son. I could. Now I'm in for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I wrote in the event that I did not survive the birth. My Percy, I know your first instinct will be to grieve. But I adjure you rather to consider our son and the love you must show him. I knew it would be a boy. Always teach him to dream, to seek the unknown. To look for what is beautiful is its own reward. And I beg you to remember those words so easy to forget. A man's reach should exceed his grasp. Or oh, what's a heaven for? My dearest love forever. A man came to see me yesterday.
He was from Brazil. He has seen Jack and Percy living with the Indians. He says they claim to have reached Zed. My dear, it's, it's, it's been years. We've sent almost a hundred men to look for your husband and son, and I fear we have to accept the inevitable. Sir John, I confess that the brutal wear and tear is great. And I suffer with heart and soul. It has taken all my strength of will to push horrors from my mind, but I beg you, not to lose confidence. I cannot doubt after so many years of sacrifice. It has become my own life's work. The Brazilian gave me this to give to you. He said Percy told him you would understand. I have trained myself to be impartial to evidence, but surely, surely this is a sign. Yes. I will have it examined. Thank you. That is all I can ask. 